Hey folks, it's Ray from DCRamRecord.com. I'm here today to give you a bit of an overview of the collector from Quark. Um, now you may have seen this in the past using Pros as part of the Quark Race Intelligence System. Now they officially announced that system last summer, so last August uh, 2015, as part of their uh, way to manage events. Uh, now before that they had kind of been demoing on various Ironman events and other races uh, where essentially allowed you to put a tracker onto an athlete, typically a pro athlete, um, and that allowed you then to track heart rate and pace and distance and cadence. Now it did all that via cellular inside the device itself, um, which made it unique. So you didn't have to go ahead and have a phone on you, but rather this device would broadcast across swim, bike and run uh, and it'd do that across known races. And that was really the difference between Quark Race Intelligence and what they have now, which is the Collector. Now the Collector name, for those that are kind of uh, Quark geeks, if you will, or data geeks, is actually fairly old. Uh, it was used on a bunch of different prototype projects along the way, but it's finally got its name on an actual legit for sale product as of today. Um, so what this is, is a box. But more interestingly, is what's I already taken out, what I've already taken out of the box, which is the Collector itself. Um, so right here on the back of my bike is a collector. Uh, it's a device that's not too much bigger than a Garmin. Um, you know, here's a Garmin Edge 510. Uh, so you can see it's a little bit bigger than that, about the same thickness here. And what this does is allows you to go ahead and again, broadcast your position in real time. So you'll first wanna go ahead and get this started up. And the way you do that is to press this button up here. And as I do that, it'll go ahead and it'll show the three lights. So power light, GPS light, and cellular light. Um, as I mentioned before, it does require cellular service. Uh, the good news is that Quark bundles that in there. So um, it'll cost basically 100 bucks a year for that cellular service, uh, but it's something they take care of so you don't put your own SIM card in here. And it works internationally, so I'm in Paris right now, but I've used it in uh, Paris, in Belgium, in Canada, in the US, um, all over the place with, with no real issues. So the first thing it's doing here is getting GPS signal. So this is gonna go ahead and blink. Uh, and then once it's green, it goes away. And the same goes for cellular service. So in this case, it's already found cellular service, so I'm good to go. Um, but next we'll have different sensors. Uh, so you can support heart rate sensors and power sensors on this, for example. And the way that works is you have these three lights, so a power and heart rate. Um, and I'll go ahead and just simply place it next to the sensor I wanna pair to. So I'm gonna double tap this twice. It's now in pairing mode, so it's looking for sensors. And I'll go down here to my bike enable it, put it right up next to it there, um, and then it's already found it, literally just as simple as that, it's, it's ready to go. Uh, and I can exit pairing mode, and I'm ready to roll. So you may have noticed there is no start button on this. Um, yes, there's a power button, but there's nothing else to say you've started a run or a race or anything. Uh, the way it works is as soon as you power this on and it has cellular signal, it's gonna go ahead and broadcast a message to your defined contact list. Uh, it's essentially your friends, as Court calls it on their site. Um, this contact list then will go ahead and give them a link uh, that provides information about where you are, where you've been, so basically a map, um, as well as your heart rate, power, cadence, and any other sensors that you have defined here. Uh, you're also given a shareable link too, so if you want to copy and paste that to Twitter or Facebook or anything you want, uh, you can do that. Um, now it's not going to happen automatically, so it's not like, uh, for example, with Garmin's live tracking service where it automatically tweets that out. Uh, maybe that's something they'll do down the road. I think that'd be, that'd be a great option for those of us that want to be able to share those things out on demand. Um, but do keep in mind that this is going to happen the second you turn this on. So even though I'm just doing a demo right now for this, uh, the girl and my coach have already received uh, text notifications that I'm riding somewhere. So once I'm on that site, you'll see my current position there as well as my current track. Uh, down at the bottom though, you'll also see my activities list. So I can look at past activities and I can even download those files as .fit files, so the same that your Garmin device would generate and transfer them somewhere else. Even better than that though is I can sync this automatically to the services. For example, you see on their Dropbox and Strava and other website platforms that I can have the collector sync that data after the fact too. Um, the way it works is it'll sync that data four hours after your uh, workout completes, or if you edit the details of the workout on the site itself, it'll sync it instantly. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of lag time. It's actually something a lot of people have requested from Garmin with their auto sync to Strava, is the ability to edit some of those details on the Garmin Connect site and then sync it as soon as that's done as opposed to right away. So that's pretty cool. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you have seen this before uh, as part of the Quark Race Intelligence platform. Now, the way that differs from the collector is that Quark Race Intelligence is designed to pair to an event, whether it be Ironman Kona um, or any other event out there. Basically, it's Quark working with an event company uh, to preload the courses in, 
defined geofences around area, so it knows when you're in the swim, it knows when you're a bike, it knows when you're on the run, um, it knows a loop you're in, for example, it knows how far you have to go, all that kind of stuff it knows. Uh, versus this, as an individual user, as part of the collector, doesn't any know any of that stuff. Uh, so basically, you're just out for a ride or a run or a swim or whatever you're doing, it just, it's just you in this, and there's no like race to find around that. Uh, Quark says maybe down the road they'll find a way to be able to create your own events. Um, for example, when I've used this with the girl, um, she can see this data, and same with my coach, but they don't really know where I'm going, so they don't know my route. So, you know, I may go out for a 50 or 60K or 80K or whatever route, but they actually don't know how far I am. So she doesn't really know, am I off the route, am I on the route? Um, so it'd be great to be able to simply download a route to the site and be able to say, this is what I'm riding, and then have this overlay on top of that, which is still the same complaint people have around Garmin's live track system, is that you don't actually know where you're going, or at least your friends don't know where you're going. Hopefully you know where you're going. Still, this will certainly appeal to people that want to be able to have tracking coverage and not burn through their cell phone, uh, which is the main difference. So this has battery life that can stretch 24, even 30 hours, uh, which is something that you know your Garmin or your cell phone certainly not going to do with GPS and tracking. Uh, so if you're doing an ultra event, this could be an option. Um, you can also charge it. There's a little charging port right there on the back, uh, so you can get that little bit extra if you had to. Um, I did leave it overnight, one night charged in just to see what would happen. It, charges and tracks just fine. Uh, so that's something you could look at as well if you're doing longer endurance events. Um, for example, I would see this being great for the uh, UTMB Ultra Trail Marathon that goes on in Chamonix each year in August. Um, I was just down there a few weeks ago uh, checking that out and this is something that would have been perfect for that kind of event where to be able to put these on all those runners and know that you're going to be able to see where they are. Even though cell phone coverage is a little bit iffy in the mountains, um, at least that's something you have here. Which is a good point. This is not satellite based from a reception standpoint. So it's different than something like the spot tracker, which goes ahead and broadcasts across satellites. This just receives your position via satellites and still uses cellular networks uh, to transmit that back to their site. Now when it comes to mounting options, you have a few different options. Uh, they make different accessories. One is this uh, basically rubbery sheath sort of thing that I can slide this in and then screw it onto either the back of a uh, seat post cage set like I have here. Um, you can also put it onto the uh, water bottle cage holders as well. It comes with a few different connection points, so you've got some options there as to how you want to attach it to your bike. It's pretty flexible. I mean, Pro has been using this now for almost two years, so it's not something that's like new. They, they This has been well tested and understood. Um, the other option that a lot of probably triathletes will use instead is this belt here. So it simply slides into the belt like this. Uh, I'm trying to do this with talking here. So it simply slides into the belt like this, and then you zip it up tight. Um, and this allows it to be accessible still in the swim. So if you put it behind you, uh, you can get it on the swim, then you just take it riding. You don't even think about it. You just simply snap it like that. Uh, and the same for the run. It's super lightweight. You know, it's also got a uh, race number, you know, attachment there for putting race numbers on and then gel holders like that. So it's actually fairly well thought out for triathletes. I mean, it's no surprise. Again, it's been used in major triathlon events, including Kona. Um, so this kind of stuff is already can somewhat figured out. So the big question is, would I pick this up? And it's a bit of a caveat answer. In a lot of ways, this is really cool. This is what I've been kind of asking for uh, for a long time. I think Quark has got something here. I think they need to refine it over the course of the winter to make it more consumable, consumer appealable. Um, meaning that this is great as a device and it works really well and there's a lot of flexibility here and Quark has shown a lot of interest in kind of working with third parties on capturing data into this. Um, they've made kind of an open call for that. Uh, and they did that on the uh, live stream that I recorded. You can see that up there or there or somewhere like that. Um, so that was pretty cool. But I think there's also potential to make it more consumer friendly. By that I mean, uh, right now, for example, when I broadcast this, my coach can't see graphs for the entire ride. Uh, instead, they have to go ahead and just see my averages or that point in time. Whereas Garmin Live Tracking does show a graph of the entire ride. So if he jumps in you know, an hour into it, two hours into it, or goes away for an hour on uh, an Ironman, you're talking a 10 to 17 hour event, it'd be handy to be able to go and see those graphs over that time period. So that's just one example of little things. Uh, they're all easy things for Cork to do. Uh, another one is to be able to kind of add a, a splicer at the front of events. So I'm standing here like this right now, um, and it's recording and, and it's going to my activities list. Uh, sometimes you're waiting for friends, right? You've got a, a group ride going on, you toss this in there, and then like, Jane or John Doe is taking forever in the bathroom or doing whatever they're doing and you have to wait like 10 minutes. Now that file has this 10 minute chunk on it. Uh, it'd be nice to simply just truncate the start and the end of the ride uh, as you see fit afterwards in that four hour time frame that you have when it's online. Again, these are minor nits, uh, but the little things I think that'd be great to improve upon it. That said, for the price and the service fee, I think it's a fair starting point. And I think that, you know, for folks that are out training on long rides especially, uh, this is something that's nice just to be able to leave on your bike like this 
you know, charge it once or you know, once a week or every two weeks, uh, press the button, and not think about anything and have your friends and family notified. So with that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and watch that like button down below as the subscribe button. Uh, there's plenty more cool stuff coming up over the next month or so that you'll want to not miss out on. Uh, so have a good one.